Well, thank you everyone for uh, for coming during the heat wave that we're having. Um, so I'm just going to talk about how to increase the developer productivity with Backstage. Um, and I'm um, Christophe Arget, an architect at Red Hat. And then I will switch to my slides. That would be better. Also, if you want to be a CTO, complain about how hard it is to plug your computer into stuff. Yes. Anybody here have a tool for the... Okay, finally. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm just going to go through a couple of buzzwords, platform engineering, IDP. You probably heard of it. Uh, if not, we'll review that. And then I will uh, give a quick introduction about Backstage, do a demo. I think the demo is probably the most interesting. You can see what you can really do with that. Uh, talk about a, uh, the Genius community. Uh, you don't have to use it, but I think it's pretty cool. And then I will take questions anytime, so just raise your hand or interrupt. Otherwise, we'll have uh, lots of time, like quite lots of time at the end for questions. So uh, who heard uh, before about platform engineering, IDPs? OK, like a third. So. Platform engineering is, you have the description here, I'm not going to read it, but basically that would be uh, to enable like self-service uh, uh, to developers. They will be able to, uh, to have access to lots of different tools, um, and then they will be able to do their job in a much more efficient uh, uh, way. So this is uh, fairly new, but this is basically based on uh, the, with the cloud, or like uh, when you are trying to, uh, especially with the cloud, when you, uh, you go there, you have to learn so many tools like containers, dockers, all the CLIs, uh, Helm charts, Argo CD, or uh, lots, of uh, lots of different uh, technologies. And it's very overwhelming. So the developers will spend most of their time learning these tools uh, or doing infrastructure instead of actually spending time doing their code. So this is why we have platform engineering. And this would be a combination of several teams. So that could be developers, uh, security teams, DevOps teams, lots of different folks working as one team. And then I'm going to just describe a few use cases why uh, you will need an IDP. Uh, so first thing, IDP, I want to clarify, I'm not talking about an IDP, uh, like an identity provider. That would be an internal developer a platform or portal. Um, and some common of the uh, use cases that would be creating code and uh, getting to production faster. I'm going to show all this in the, in the demos. Um, otherwise, onboarding a team member. So if you've been in consulting or you have contractors, probably you've seen them struggling for like a couple of weeks before having access to all the, like the entire environment tools and be able to be productive um, or to just create consistent and repeatable uh, pipelines or infrastructure. Usually you switch between teams or projects and you have different uh, CI, uh, could be toolings, but otherwise, even if you are using the same tool, that would be different configurations, and uh, it's just super hard to, uh, to jump from one to the other. Uh, or it could be also migrating uh, existing um, uh, applications. So if you are not a brand new startup with uh, a new repo, uh, you probably have like legacy apps that are not running to the cloud, and you want to migrate them, or switch your database, switch uh, whatever from Jenkins to something uh, like the new shiny tools. So uh, lots of different uh, uh, use cases there. So now I can, it's time to talk about Backstage. Um, so Backstage is, uh, has been created by Spotify. Yes, the music uh, uh, company. Um, they have been doing this uh, internally and then they released that open source. It's been integrated to the CNCF um, about two years ago. And um, uh, yeah, that's a, a really good tool um, uh, to get started with. So they are, uh, for them, they realized that happy developers make uh, happy code. Uh, or like good code, and then they um, 
they also find out that the happy developers are like, uh, they will uh, stay longer in the company instead of just getting burned out or tired of something and, and quit uh, their job. So a few of the core features in uh, Backstage will be a, uh, like a software catalog. So that would be a way of um, seeing everything, um, like all your application, the resources, infrastructure, uh, pretty much everything that uh, you will be using. Uh, you have a pretty extensive uh, plugin system. So with the plugin, you will just add extra features to your uh, backstage uh, instance. Uh, the software templates, or um, more known as golden path templates, uh, will allow you to create infrastructure or like a new application. Um, you have something also called tech docs, which is uh, like very uh, like pretty good. If you are use, uh, usually you probably use Confluence or something like that to uh, to add the documentation. And you can see that the documentation will not be um, up to date with, uh, with the code. So tech docs will allow you to have the documentation with the code that lives with the code. And the developers will be able to create markdown uh, files similar to like a readme um, uh, with the code and then submit pull requests. So you have auditing, tracking, everything uh, with the code and with up to date documentation. So tech docs will be a nice way to automatically generate HTML from those markdown files and uh, show it from, uh, uh, from backstage. And then you have also a, a pretty powerful uh, search system. Um, when you are using all the different plugins that will aggregate data from uh, Jenkins, Jira, or like all the different uh, systems, and then you will be able to search across all these systems. So it's a pretty uh, useful feature. Um, there is an example of the different plugins that you have access to. If you go to the backstage.io website, you will see a plugins uh, page and you have over 140 plugins. So basically all the mostly common tools uh, will be there. So on the SEM side, you will have uh, uh, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, on the CI CD will be um, Argo CD, Jenkins, uh, GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, um, um, uh, uh, a lot more. Um, uh, monitoring is Dynatrace, uh, PagerDuty, um, um, uh, Grafana, and, uh, and uh, etc. The issue tracking will be Jira, um, uh, uh, the GitHub issues, or uh, same for, for GitLab and many others. And for the code quality, you will have Lighthouse, uh, SonarCube, and, uh, and more plugins. So basically, if you are using a tool and uh, not um, made in your company, but something that um, is available on, on the internet, you will probably have a, a plugin for it. So just quickly backstage numbers. Um, you can actually those numbers are uh, like a few months old. So they, uh, they have a lot more on, on all of them, but you can see it's a pretty active um, uh, project. Uh, 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 they're available on GitHub. And then you can see lots of uh, adopters, contributors, uh, or like even stars, I think that's probably the most uh, uh, important data in there. Um, and I will go straight to the demo. I think that's the most interesting. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, Genus later on, that's the, the community, but this is a uh, backstage instance. So if you, I don't know if uh, anyone has been uh, uh, like playing with backstage or try it. Okay. So um, backstage does not come with much features out of the box. It's a pretty powerful tool, but you have to extend it. So you have to add uh, 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 custom things, some integrations, uh, plugins. So it's, uh, it's becoming really useful for, uh, uh, for your company. Uh, so uh, with Genus, uh, uh, we'll preload really lots of, like lots of work is already uh, done. So in this case, uh, you can use a, you can have a homepage and uh, display all the tools that will be available in the, in the company. So this is useful for like new folks that will be uh, uh, come in and they don't have access to like all the clusters or tools. Or, uh, so you have like, uh, it's kind of like a favorite page and you have access to everything uh, in there. So you can uh, obviously change everything in there. So one of the powerful uh, core features will be the software catalog. So here, that's where you will list everything that you, that you can get from uh, your company. So any applications or even infrastructure, I'm just going to use, for example, the Backstage Showcase here. And you can see that on the overview, I can get, have, I can get a quick access of um, 
information about uh, the, like the pull request, or um, in this case, it's using Argo CD, so you can see um, uh, the, the status uh, of the app. Uh, or, um, the, uh, unfortunately, the, the sonar cube is not plugged to it, but that you will get like the status, like the code smells or like the vulnerabilities uh, from there. Um, so you can add anything to this page that will make it important. Yes, I see your question. Yes, absolutely. Like this? Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to go through a couple of tabs. So there is a topology view uh, that will just show the different things that will be uh, available uh, on your Kubernetes. So that should work with every Kubernetes, uh, uh, AKS, GKS, um, uh, OpenShift, or, uh, or anything there. Uh, so you can select your cluster, and then you will be able to see everything that is uh, 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 available in uh, a specific name, uh, namespace. So if, you are, if, for example, my app was using a database or stuff like this, I will see uh, the database and uh, a link uh, uh, to see that they are uh, connected. Um, and then you can configure with anything uh, that you want. So if you want to sh see, for example, the, uh, in this case, using the GitHub issues, but well, that could be Jira, that could be the uh, uh, GitLab. Um, same with the uh, pull request, merge request, uh, anything with a CI CD. Um, just quickly log in. Then you can see, uh, in this case, it's using the GitHub Actions, but that could be replaced with a Tekton, uh, Jenkins, or uh, Azure DevOps, uh, any other uh, uh, existing plugins. So um, you can see quickly that as a developer, I could get access to all the information. I, I won't have to go to 20 different systems to, uh, uh, to see what's happening, especially if my app, for example, has uh, something not working, then you can see everything from, uh, from there. Um, and then obviously you can still click and actually go to the downstream service if you want to get more info or logs uh, and uh, other useful informations. Um, if you are um, having images, um, you can have uh, like an uh, OCI uh, like registry, so that would show anything from JFrog Artifactory, Quay, Azure Container Registry, or uh, any others. Um, um, and another cool thing is about the dependencies. So for example, here, um, uh, this instance of Backstage is dependent on uh, a few extra things. Maybe it's a bit small, but uh, that would be using Argo CD, GitHub, uh, Keycloak, uh, Postgres uh, as a database, and a S3 bucket. So then you can see uh, everything that would be needed by this application. So if you want to track uh, or see who is using what, that's a nice way of, uh, of finding that, that information. And then maybe you have to go to another team to uh, talk with them to get access to something. Or, um, and then you can have a list of uh, the different things that would be available. So in this case, you can see the, uh, the resources that would be uh, um, uh, using. But if, for example, this was a Spring Boot API and I was providing uh, APIs, I could show which APIs uh, I was providing uh, from that specific component. And uh, last one here. Um, so that would be TechDocs, what I was mentioning earlier. Uh, it just shows the markdown files that would be converted to HTML and just loaded in there. So you can get access to um, uh, uh, just whatever there, uh, anything uh, there related to this uh, specific component or application. So just the difference uh, compared to a Confluence or anywhere else, uh, the, this will be available uh, in a, like a Git repository, so that will, uh, the developer will tend to update this more frequently than uh, in another system. Um, I was mentioning uh, APIs earlier, so if you are having APIs, uh, they will be listed here. You have an API catalog, so this is also pretty, uh, pretty nice in enterprise to try to not duplicate uh, APIs, um, and then the format will be available as a, um, uh, open API or like Swagger. So I, I will imagine that everybody is kind of uh, uh, pretty familiar with, uh, uh, with this format here. Uh, but this will be available uh, straight from, uh, uh, from the API there. So I know it's not impressive. I just have, I'm using the pet store like from the Spring uh, demo. But uh, if, uh, if you are having a big setup there, you could have uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, items there. So that's, uh, uh, that's Pretty cool, and this will be available through the search. So anyone could go just uh, from the search here and just uh, find uh, uh, anything related to uh, uh, to the APIs or applications. Um, 
you could have uh, other things like uh, showing all the different clusters. Um, so if you're uh, uh, using Amazon or, uh, or Azure or uh, other things uh, that could be listed here and you could see the status of your clusters and if you have groups available or the, like the number of uh, um, uh, nodes uh, available so you can have some uh, uh, extra information there. Um, everything I'm showing is not necessarily things that you will get out of the box uh, from backstage that's available via the plugins. So you will have to do lots of uh, tweaking and adding those, uh, those plugins. And after that, I think the, probably the best features is uh, this one. When I go to create, uh, that will be the, um, uh, all the templates or golden path templates. So this will allow you to create an application or um, onboarding a new user, um, creating infrastructure. So that could be creating a, like a S3 bucket, a database. Um, so I will, uh, I will go uh, through one of them. Backstage is actually not going to create the database. It's just going to create a, probably a new repository, uh, GitOps uh, style, and then inject some files, YAML configurations. And those files will be consumed by a downstream service. So that would be Terraform, Ansible, um, uh, Crossplane, or uh, any kind of these tools. And actually, they will create the, the, the infrastructure. So in that, uh, uh, on that specific uh, screen, uh, Backstage will allow developers to have like a self-service uh, way of creating infrastructure and won't be dependent from another team, but uh, Backstage is actually not going to create any uh, infrastructure. So uh, there have a couple of examples um, that I can just uh, create, uh, so like related to Ansible. Uh, there, for example, that just adds Argo CD to, uh, to an existing project. So if an existing project was using Jenkins, you could migrate to another tool. Um, otherwise, you could just create a new application. So uh, we, here, you can see like a, a few different templates for different languages. But if it was, for example, a, a, a Spring Boot application, um, I would go there and then, well, you just have to fill some, uh, some information. Then you can have a few things with, uh, with the security. So this metadata comes from the template. Anybody can, uh, can go and customize to their needs based on uh, their company. And then after that, that will require some uh, information about, uh, uh, about Java, especially for like Maven or Gradle, so you can uh, have the, the group and artifact IDs. And uh, in this case, yeah, it shows how to have, uh, uh, you have a multiple choice for, uh, for the CI. So you can use uh, uh, GitHub Actions or Tecton, but this could be for uh, deploying. So if I wanted my, to have my app, uh, on, uh, on Azure, on, on Amazon, then I could uh, offer like something uh, similar there. So this is a uh, public URL. So obviously the creation has been disabled. So uh, just saying that that's going to fail and that is uh, to be expected. So when I go there, uh, you can see what's happening on the left side. So that's just going to grab the template and automatically um, kind of find and replace the, the metadata that we've been providing. And then after that's going to create a new uh, repository, inject the code. Uh, that could be also submitting a pull request if you want to have like some, uh, uh, some controls. And then uh, after that, this new component will be available from, uh, from backstage. So you saw this took like a second or two. Obviously it failed because uh, uh, the, the access to GitHub is not, uh, uh, is not configured. But otherwise, I will have a brand new repository with my Spring Boot application and any other CI CD that I will have uh, in that template. So um, I guess everybody can say, OK, I know how to do that. That's true. Uh, I know too. But um, if I have to create like 10 microservices, I don't want to copy like the same files and update the same files. That will still me like probably an hour or two to do or like fix a, a typo or, and then uh, it's boring after the second or third microservice. So there uh, you just have a template that the company uh, will kind of own or like um, some, uh, some expert in the company, especially this or in that case, that would be related to Spring Boot. And then um, you will be able to just create an app uh, within seconds. And um, uh, in that template, you could customize uh, like the Spring, uh, like spring Security, uh, the, the actuator endpoints, or anything that you, will, that you will need for your enterprise that would be already baked in in that template. So 
Now, uh, someone more junior, a contractor that comes in the company, then they don't have to really get any knowledge. They will have their app already uh, ready for, for production. And then that would just appear, uh, that, would be, that would be available uh, there. So, any questions on the demo here? No? So imagine I have like 10 microservices yep. and I have two teams management. Is there some kind of build of user management? Yes. Which team get access to watch services? Okay, that's a great question. I will uh, come to that in a, I will go back to my slides and uh, I will mention that. Uh, so I will say yes and no for this. Okay. <laughs> So now uh, I've been trying at actually Genus, so I'm going to talk about it. Uh, the Genus community is a, so an open source community. Actually, I'm uh, working on, on that. It's mostly sponsored by Red Hat, but that's using uh, Backstage under the hood. You're just trying to make it uh, a lot easier to, uh, to use. So Backstage, uh, you install the, this, uh, uh, you, it allows you to create like a, an IDP, but you have to do all that, uh, all that work. So we're trying to preload all the different plugins that most likely you will use and add uh, extra features so, uh, such as uh, RBAC or like the, the, the permissions. Um, by default in uh, Backstage, everything is visible to, ev uh, to everyone. So you connect and uh, you will see all the projects or everything in, within the company. So this works well for a smaller size company, a startup, but for a, a um, regulated enterprise, then that's uh, definitively not going to work. So we are um, we're adding some uh, uh, extra capabilities in, uh, um, in there. So on, in, the, in the Genius community, we are providing some uh, um, uh, front-end and back-end plugins. Um, uh, the showcase app is uh, what I've been uh, just uh, showing in the, in the demo. So if you are using the Docker image, then you will have most likely all the plugins that you need already uh, pre-configured. And then you just have to change the home page, put the URLs, the token, or like uh, anything to access your, uh, uh, your CI CD tools uh, or Kubernetes, but uh, everything will be already done. Um, and then, uh, so we'll provide a couple of uh, uh, golden path templates. Um, they are more just to help you getting started. You can see how it works, and then you will just customize that to, uh, 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 to your needs. And same with uh, custom actions. So custom actions will be um, adding some extra features to, uh, to a template. Earlier I was mentioning you can create a pull request, or you can clone a repo, or uh, like create a new repo, et cetera. So this will be done via actions. So uh, we also provide a couple of, uh, of actions there. Um, um, and uh, the Genius community is trying to bring uh, enterprise capabilities to a uh, backstage. So we quickly mentioned uh, like RBAC, or uh, you, like the user management, but a few extra things like uh, dynamic plugins. Currently in Backstage, you have to add um, plugins manually and it requires a bit of code. Um, so, forgot to mention, um, backstage, backstage is like a web app, so it's based on HTML and JavaScript. <laughs> um, but it's pretty easy, you just download an NPM, usually you have one line or a couple of lines to add in, in the code to enable, uh, to enable a feature, but uh, the dynamic plugins will be another way to just have YAML files uh, to set and then you can automatically integrate plugins. Uh, so you don't have to change the code, and then you don't have to rebuild or redeploy your app. Uh, that would be kind of like a portal and portlets. You kind of drag and drop a portlet, and they kind of work. Yeah, okay. It's been a while since <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so not working exactly the same way, but uh, uh, you get the idea. <laughs> Can you get chat GPT to <laughs> you could. I mean, with ChatGPT, you can do uh, pretty much everything nowadays. Uh, I believe I've seen some videos. Uh, I mean, after all, is that true or not? I'm not sure. But uh, people asking to generate the plugin, and that's why generating like the, the the code uh, like for the plugin. So, who knows? If it's true, that's cool. It works. So essentially, um, with like the the default backstage, um, you can't just add a new plugin. So with the default backstage, you can add a plugin, but that you will have to add it manually. You will have to get the source code, add the plugin, and then rebuild and have your custom uh, instance. So you can't just like bring up like a Docker container and say add yeah, this plugin. In. No, you cannot do that. Oh, so okay. this will be done via the dynamic plugins. Yep. 
Um, and another thing, uh, so uh, personas um, uh, backstage is done by developers for developers, I would say. But uh, we realized that it can be used by many other folks. So that could be a product manager, or that could be a QA team. Um, CTO. Uh, CTO, yes, we mentioned that earlier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we try to bring a different. Uh, or just like in terms of the platform and uh, like the platform engineers that will maintain uh, this, uh, they, they will need extra features to be able to have like some kind of admin uh, rights that is not available for everybody. So we have different uh, different personas uh, also, uh, uh, and then um, all the tabs that you've seen earlier will be able to customize the tabs. So based on the different roles that you have, then you could see more or less uh, 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 things, or even the overview page maybe. Uh, if you are uh, uh, in QA team or a manager, maybe you want to see uh, like some other metrics than the sonar cube metrics, or, uh, or um, so we can uh, we can tweak this. Is that like a, is Janus a, a fork of Backstage, or are you doing it entirely through like plugins? So that would be uh, entirely through plugins. Okay. Yes. So uh, the goal is to also if someone has already a Backstage instance working and they've been doing lots of work and they have an entire CI CD already uh, 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 and they can deploy uh, easily this and then they can uh, consume their plugins and they don't have to use uh, the genus showcase image. And then to add a few extra features about uh, compliance and auditing. So uh, we know who did what and when and uh, it's not that bad, but <laughs> some enterprises, they need this, uh, uh, that feature. And um, I would say if backstage or uh, this new world is uh, uh, so in demand, um, do they have com uh, competition? And yes, they do have quite a lot. So I just mentioned a few names here. They are not really in a specific order, uh, just the way I was thinking about them and writing them here. So uh, some are actually based on backstage. Some others, they created their own, um, their own code. So it looks kind of backstage or they do similar features, but that would be uh, uh, not based on backstage, and uh, I would say most of them are um, uh, uh, SaaS, uh, uh, SaaS available. So uh, on this, I just showed uh, you could use a vanilla backstage, you could use Genus, um, otherwise uh, even uh, v VMware Tenzu has like also some uh, like offering there, so you have like some custom uh, backstage there. Uh, so I guess you can see that it's a pretty uh, uh, popular demand. Um, and uh, that is it already. 